And while we're talking defense, I think we got to bring up probably the play of the game in the ninth inning, Kevin Biggio going home to Danny Jansen to get the runner at the plate. Incredible. It's the walk-off with Scott Belford and Adam Mack. This ball is crushed. Let's talk opening day. What a fun time. Wasn't it great? We went toe-to-toe with Garrett Cole, and we didn't blink. So a few things to take away from yesterday's game. I loved how this lineup worked Garrett Cole. Okay, like Cole pitched one, uh, he pitched 5.1 innings. Okay, they chased him in the sixth. He had a, a 97 pitch count. He was at 60 pitches by the third. Beautiful work by that lineup. And you know what? Another thing that stood out about this lineup is that the top three guys on in the batting order, Simeon, Biggio, Bichette went hitless and the game was won by the rest of the lineup. And that's how deadly this Blue Jays offense is. And that's why you, that's why you want such a deep offense. I mean, if you look at, at who won the game for us yesterday, right? Randall Grishik had a quietly fantastic game. It was a very quiet performance, but man, without him, they wouldn't have won that game. He drove in the winning run. He played some really good defense and he was hitting he was hitting eighth in that lineup. Amazing. Like, it's, it is amazing. It well, is fantastic. I was saying yesterday, you know, other than Danny Jansen and Kevin Biggio, basically everyone who's in our lineup has 30 home run potential. Exactly. You know, even Grichik. Exactly. I mean, Grichik won't, won't play enough games this year to get to 30, but... Without some injury without help. Without some but, injury help. But, ho- yeah. you know, hopefully he doesn't play a full season. Agreed. Um, Agreed. But, yeah, but what a great fourth outfielder to have. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So... That's great because uh, I know I've watched my share for my fair share of Blue Jays games where you've got two or three guys that have 40 or 50 home run potential, but when those guys don't show up for a game, it uh, makes for a long day. Yeah. Defense was impressive yesterday too, and that was one thing that when you look at the difference between this lineup this year and, and the 2020 Blue Jays, Fingers crossed that this is how this season goes on because it was their Achilles heel last year was their defense. They made errors that they had no business making. And man, yesterday there were some really impressive things happening. Kevin Biggio looked amazing at third. Vladdy, talk about a picking machine at first. I've never seen him play first base that well. It was great. His footwork was fantastic. He did have the one throw uh, where his toe came off the bag. Had to stretch for a throw in the dirt from third. But, I mean, nothing got by him. And you know what? The truth is, I truly believe maybe half the first baseman in the majors make that play. Like, it wasn't like it wasn't like a a big gaff, you know, like it's exactly it's not like where we can sometimes last year where you watched Vladdy and you were like, come on. (laughs) Well, and and 29 other guys, you know, 29 other teams, guys would have made that play. Come on, Vladdy. But no, not yesterday. Um, I want to talk pitching, too. Can we we go back to defense for a minute? Yes. Let's go back to defense. Slow me down, Adam. All right. Let's slow down. So, defense looked good. We did have a couple blemishes, though, and I think it's important to acknowledge those. We had a blooper in the left field that I'm not happy about. Yes. Um, I think it was the Phelps inning when he was pitching. We got into kind of a pickle with the bases loaded, and he pitched mm-hmm. himself out of it. So, good yes, for him. Did. Got um, that ground, that uh, double play. Right. So, I was very that nervous, was but there was a uh, bloop pop fly to deep shortstop shallow left field um Bichette made a showed great range heck of an effort to even even be in the area yeah um Lourdes got a terrible jump on the terrible jump on it so that's one thing I want to point out Lourdes not happy with you on that one um I I think what this boils down to is we're just we're still not quite in mid-season form yet and I think you're it's right. I, I, do, about, but. I, I don't think that that, I think that was more of a, a mental blunder than just the fact that he wasn't playing left field. Well, right. you know, like for the most part, he played a very good game. Yep, absolutely. It was just one little thing that we're harping on yeah, here, but absolutely. Yeah. Um, Bo Bichette had a nice diving stab at shortstop. Mm-hmm. Uh, couldn't come up with a throw in time. No, the he throw was, was online, but he didn't, uh, the hitter beat it out. 
Um, but it was still nice to see him coming up with those those diving snags. Um, Simeon had a great play at second. Yes, he did. And uh, that was just after uh, the Vladdy out. Um, not out when he when his foot came off the bag. It was the same yeah. thing. So it was nice mm-hmm. to see. Nice to see that we got out of it kind of unscathed there. Um, and while we're talking defense, I think we got to bring up probably the play of the game in the ninth inning, Kevin Biggio going home to Danny Jansen to get the runner at the plate. Incredible. I mean, even even when he did it, both of us were like, why wouldn't he go for the double play? And then you kind of start breaking down that inning, and you're like, yeah. you know what? Had they not gotten the guy at first, that's a run, and that is the win right there. That's the game. Yeah. So very smart to just right. like, he just knew. He just yeah. knew, go home, I've got him. And that was the thing, too, is Talkman had just stolen second base. He'd just stolen third base. Right. He's got speed. So, like, kind of gutsy to even go for that. It might have been, you know, you might at that moment as your third, as the third baseman think, maybe I do have a better chance at the double play. But he, he you know played what? it perfectly. And that, I think, again, just speaks to where Kevin Biccio's mind is. Yes. You know, he's, what, 20 for 20 in his career on stolen bases. Mm-hmm. He's got a great evaluation of the strike zone when he's hitting i think he just knows he just knows he can make those split second decisions where i've i've either got enough time to get him at home or i don't and i have to hope for the best on this double play so he reads the game so so well yeah so well all right anything else on defense no let's let's move on because I, I really want to talk pitching. Like I was, I know there's lots I to talk about with pitching. Lots to talk about because Hinjin Ryu had a hell of a game. Okay, and I he gave up the one long ball to Gary Sanchez. Those were his, his those were his two earned runs. Yeah. Those were the two runs of the game that he gave up was one mistake to Gary Sanchez. Yeah. Besides that, the guy was dealing, picking corners, mixing pitches up and down in the strike zone. Just everything you want to see out of your ace, especially when you're going head-to-head with Garrett Cole, mm-hmm. who didn't outpitch Ryu by any means no. yesterday. No, he, I mean, Garrett Cole was on his game. He pitched great. But like you said, we, we had some hitters that were hitting. We had some mm-hmm. guys that were not hitting but working the count. Danny Jansen had a great day at the plate. I'm not a Danny Boy, Jansen believer he? at all. So, so no, you're for not. me, that means something. He had that nine pitch at bat to start the sec or uh, in the second inning there that just helped drive Cole's pitch count up. That was beautiful. Right. It was an out, but it was a beautiful at bat. And then the next one, he had a six pitch at bat where he gets a hit. Y- you know, like if you're the catcher in the nine hole and you're you're forcing fifteen pitches out of the opposing starting pitcher, yeah, hey, we'll you take are that. doing your job absolutely. absolutely. And then Chatwood came in. So Ryu pitched about 5.1 innings, right? He got chased in the sixth. Chatwood came in, runner on first, two quick outs. You love to see it. And then, yeah, there were some guys in our bullpen that made us nervous. David Phelps, you kind of brought up in the seventh, came in and had uh, the bases loaded and got out of it with a a ground ball, double play. Mm -hmm. That was great. Uh, Dolis was dealing. He looked good. Dolis was on his game for sure. Romano, he pitched well. Like, it's funny because when we were doing the live stream, I was a little bit down on Romano's performance, and then I watched Jay's in 30 last night because yeah. I was just so high on, on opening day. I was like, yeah. I'll watch this again. Heck, yeah. yeah, just to see Merriweather's 10th, which we'll get to in a minute here. <laughs> yes, we will. But Romano, actually, he pitched pretty well, you know? Like, he was a little, a little off on his control. But he kind of got it under under wraps there by the end of the inning, and he got out of the ninth and sent them to extra innings. Yeah. The Jays put up that run. We talked about that already. Grissick driving in JD from second base because they, of course, start extra innings with a runner on second now. All right, so we pinch hit. And then uh, bring in – oh, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. I was just saying, so we pinch ran for Rowdy to less because he was our – Yeah, pinch our ran for Rowdy, second, yeah. So we put Davis in. Yeah, and it was beauty. And then enter Julian Merriweather. Listen, this is where we're gonna we're going to talk for a little bit about this guy. Obviously, Julian Merriweather has been talked about a little bit amongst Jays fans over the last couple of years. He is who they got in the Josh Donaldson trade. When Donaldson was traded, 
everyone was pretty down on the fact that they didn't move him sooner. I was one of those people. His value definitely went down from them not moving him sooner. Right. He was injured that entire 2018. And then they traded him to the Indians. And this is where the Shapiro Atkins regime kind of came up big because they knew about Merriweather. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, Merriweather was going through uh, Tommy John recovery. He's been an injury-prone pitcher, and he's not young. No. Julian Merriweather is 30 years old, everybody. But to watch him come in in the late innings yesterday, to come in in the 10th, he was incredible. I could not stop thinking about this man's pitch, like, diversity. Like, it was so insane, his pitch choices. And I've actually, I've, I've got the pitches here. And I, I, I do wish to go through it because it was just so incredible to watch. And one of the big things about this guy is that, that so the average difference between a, a changeup at a fastball is about 10 to 12 miles an hour. And the whole goal is that your delivery on a changeup replicates the fastball exactly. So the, the hitter can't tell what's coming until it's already in the air. So if they're gearing up for the fastball, they're going to be ahead of the changeup. That's the goal. Right. Julian Merriweather throws 99 miles an hour for his fastball. His changeup is 79. It is a it is a Absurd. nineteen to twenty mile an hour gap, and we were seeing it fool guys yesterday that couldn't even swing. Like yeah. that was the thing that was beautiful. Aaron Hicks he started him off with a ninety seven mile an hour fastball, and then threw two changeups, eighty and seventy nine miles an hour. The guy couldn't swing. Like when you're gearing up for ninety nine, and you see that it's like that's the thing with a twenty mile an hour gap. You know right away it's not a fastball, but you can't move on it. Your timing like, is so off. Your timing is so off. You can't even swing. It was just beautiful to watch. Yeah. So he three pitches to Hicks, a strikeout. Enter enter Gio Carlo Stanton. Did he ever look stupid? Did he ever look stupid? Like he literally Merriweather painted the right side of the of the zone with an 87 mile an hour slider painted the left side of the zone with an 88 mile an hour slider and then threw 99 miles an hour inside and high and he swung right through it like yeah. he looked he like he walked away shaking his head that's one Just, of the best well, hitters in the game one of the best hitters in the game walking away shaking his head while yankees fans boo him <laughs> cherry on the cake for us jays fans <laughs> Just <laughs> yes sir so Julian Merriweather, definitely someone to, as a Jays fan, get familiar with that name. Get excited. 